mankind has uh, in, encoded in them and the human being is almost hardwired in us to want to look forward to a higher power to help us and to guide us. I mean, we start off as babies, and that's what a baby does. It looks to its parents to feed him and to take care of him and change his diapers. And then as he gets older, you know, the four and five and six years old, it becomes very dependent on the parent uh, for food and for taking care of him. And so by the time he reaches the ripe old age of in his teens, he realizes that uh, you know he requires uh, somebody to be there for him, his parents and government, the police or something, because he requires that uh, as, a, as a human. While animals, when they are born, instinctively come out to life knowing exactly what not to do and what to do and how to do it, and that's the way they take care of themselves. And the parents look over them the best they can, but the, but the, the baby... Uh, is pretty well programmed already. We call it instinct, instinctive reaction. So instinctive reaction in humans is that we look to dad to take care of us. We look to mother to feed us and take care of us and nurture us. So therefore, government, in point of fact, there is a law in the United States. I don't know exactly how to spell it, but it's pronounced parent patri. Uh, it's an actual federal law, parent patri. Uh, and you look it up in the dictionary or in the law book, and it will tell you the law says in America that the government of the United States is your parent. It actually owns your body. It owns your soul. And it owns you. And it's, it's a law, parent patri. And so when you begin to see the connections between what, what are you talking about? Government owns me. Well, that's what it says. It's a, it's a law. And therefore you thought, well, you know, your parents don't own you. Well, God owns you. Well, that's what I said. The government owns you. And so, you know, when you look at all of these ideas and concepts like I did when I was a kid and I used to ask questions and, I, I also always wanted to debate and question the, the, the religious leaders and you know, the church leaders that I would go and visit. I would ask if I could ask questions in, in, you know, in, in classes. And they would tell me, no, we're not interested in uh, debating anything. If you wish to accept our religion and come to our church, fine, you're welcome. Uh, but we're not interested to debate anything with you, period. So that's the name of that tune. Well, uh, I, I was so anxious to talk with somebody to debate and discuss you know, my, my, my findings. As a kid, I was doing a lot of research on religion. And so now today, now that I have finally, uh, after all these years of talking and doing the best I can to be heard by the public, and doing radio for over 40 years, and traveling around the world, and doing lectures on theology and religion. Now I get people in churches and religious people calling and asking me if I would like to debate in the church uh, some of my findings, to which I try and be polite and say, I don't debate anybody on any subject at any time, period, end of sentence. Don't bother to even call me. I came to you as I was a kid, and I was honestly wanting to understand, and I honestly wanted to discuss my findings and do what you call debating. And you told me, no, you're not interested to hear me as a kid and hear what I had to say. So let me tell you something and understand it clearly. I'm not interested in debating anybody about nothing. All I do is go to the reference books, the encyclopedias, the, all the hundreds of reference books, and get an idea about what all of the all the authorities in the world are saying about a thing, and then do my own research. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm not debating anything. I'm just going to tell you what I've found. You know, and so I don't care if you believe it or not, or if you can understand it or not. 